Well, we'll get into um, calling, yeah, which awesome. is something that, again, I feel like is tied to that same era for me. Maybe it's just because that's when I was kind of yeah. coming up in mm-hmm. faith and, and kind of life. Um, mm. But I feel like there was much made of your calling yes, and, totally. um, you know, pursuing that which you were meant to do, yeah. um, staying in the will of God, all of mm. these things. How do you kind of... How do you understand yeah. the idea of calling and the will of God and all of that? Yeah. Such a great question, Riley. I think because, yeah, we probably grew up, I think I'm a bit older than you, but we probably grew up in that same sort of era of the church and stuff. And one thing I put on Instagram recently was like, I've stopped preaching or I made a decision to stop preaching Jesus and. So adding things to Jesus. So I the way I explained it was like, when someone marries someone you don't celebrate by going oh that's so great that you're marrying that girl like it's amazing because you know now you'll have someone to cook for you and now you have someone to clean for you and now you have someone to do this for you and that for you you don't focus on all the benefits that that person's going to bring into this person's life you're like wow you're such a great couple that's awesome like you guys go so well together and you're like celebrating the person you're not celebrating the or, specific benefits right yeah, yeah you know yeah. what i mean yeah absolutely and, and sometimes i think in our era what we've sort of grown up in um it's more like we're trying to sell the benefits of coming to jesus so and the true. benefits of yeah. god and so we're going like jesus is almost a means to to an end jesus is the way that you achieve your calling and jesus is the one that helps you you know fulfill fulfill all your dreams and stuff and i sort of got to this year and i was like what the heck am i doing like that's not what jesus is here for it's like jesus is here for us to be in a relationship with him he is the prize like god is the prize relationship with him is the ultimate prize and so i think calling has to fit under that we have to sort of see calling not as the ultimate goal of our lives to fulfill you know the destiny that's on my life the calling that's on my life the ultimate calling is to be in relationship with jesus and to live life in obedience and faith with him and to him and so that will look like you doing great things for the kingdom of god just naturally as you start to walk with jesus into all that he has for you but your calling is not necessarily the end goal of like fulfilling some unique destiny here on earth. The calling right. is to Christ. The calling is yes. to take up your cross and follow him and Absolutely. you know be his. So I think, yeah, we've probably had a really similar sort of yeah. background in church. But Yeah, and I think that's such a valuable um, kind of realisation mm. in that, yeah, Jesus isn't a means to an end. I love yeah. that. Jesus and, um, you know, whatever, Jesus and significance jesus mm, and influence yep, yep, Je- yep, for yep. me for that was a big yep. one for me was jesus and influence yes yeah, totally. and i was it confused me because yeah i saw world leaders and i saw mm. celebrities or i saw whoever with mm. influence without jesus yeah and i'm kind of like okay well i'm pursuing a life with jesus yeah I wouldn't maybe ad- had have admitted to myself, but I was pursuing it for the influence that yeah, I had through ministry yeah. or through whatever yeah totally. um but yeah, it, 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 I mean, it's so true. It all ultimately comes up as mm, empty totally. and all that remains is Jesus anyway. Totally. So we may as well start there. Yeah. yeah. And that's the prize. Like that's what's the better thing. Like not, you know, yeah. the calling and stuff that is going to leave you empty, as you said, and unfulfilled unless it's propelled by Jesus and yeah. for him and through yeah. him. And, with and him. submits to him as, yeah. like all the same. So totally. yeah, no, I think that's awesome. Mm. Um, do you then think that there is those that are called to ministry like a Definitely, like a like yeah. a service within the church kind absolutely. of thing absolutely yeah. yeah i think um as you grow in your relationship with Jesus, he definitely reveals to you like his calling for your life and his purpose for your life and um, leads you into that. And so for, you know, people like yourself and me, like I know as a teenager, God really spoke to me very clearly about preaching to the nations and going and doing that. And I'm doing that now, I'm 33. Yeah. And so I've seen all of those things that God put in my heart, those dreams and stuff that God put in my heart as a teenager. I've started to see them unfold in my life you know, as I've grown into them. Um, But yeah, I would say definitely it's not just for the people in ministry that God reveals a specific unique path and unique calling. It's for people called to be teachers and doctors and lawyers and anything that God has called you to be. God will reveal that to you and he'll lead you into it. But yeah, I definitely think there are people who are called to the ministry, which is, you know, in the church, serving the church and 
building the yeah. church in that way. Yeah. yeah. No, that's so fantastic. Yeah. Mm. Um, there's a book called um, An Astronaut's Guide to Life on Earth. Cool. And it's yeah. like a, a brilliant book. Awesome. Um, and right at the early chapters, he talks about... Um, I can't remember the name of the author right now, but he talks about how when he was 10, he knew that he knew that he knew he was going to be an astronaut. Wow. And he's like, okay, I can't go to space right now, <laughs> but w- th- this is like a key question that has kind of guided me for so mm. long is what what does an astronaut do when they're 10? So cool. You know? So That's like awesome. if I'm an astronaut at 25, yeah. well, I don't know how old astronauts are, 45, they're so old. <laughs> Who knows? I, anyway. Yeah, yeah exactly. I um, yeah. If, I, you know, if I'm an astronaut yeah. at 30... What do I do now yeah. to kind of get myself yeah. ready? Because it's not a switch that, you know, once you become that age, you are all of a sudden yeah. in your dream career. There is preparation and there totally. is um, leading and, and growing. Definitely. Um, so I guess, f- and firstly, we could say for those who are kind of feeling that inkling towards ministry, they feel yeah. like they are called or they know they're called yep. to ministry. What are some things, what is someone called to ministry? What does a pastor do when they are? 13, 15, 16, whatever. Yeah, I would say just grow in your relationship with God. Just go so deep in your relationship with God, in your hunger for God, your knowledge of the word, um, you know, be in prayer every day. I remember as a teenager, I just got so on fire for God. I'd get up at 6 a.m. in the morning, read my Bible, pray. Like, I was Mm. just so desperate for God. And I was with Pastor Andy Harrison. He was preaching at a conference that I was preaching at yesterday. And he said the same. He said, like, you know, he got so hungry for God and he started to cut, he stopped watching TV for a year so that he could spend time in prayer and stuff. And I just see people who are called to, you know, this life. God really starts to prepare you as a teenager just to go so deep with him and just this radical like devotion to him. So um, I think that's really important. Just like be really personally devoted to God and just start to read the word and pray and worship him and stuff personally. Step out in the gifts of the spirit. So totally. praying for people for healing, sharing the gospel with people. You know, you don't need a platform to preach the gospel. You don't so need good. a platform to pray for healing or to prophesy. You can do that every day um, in, your, in your daily walk. You can learn how to minister with with people and I'd say serve your local church do whatever you can to serve people um, submit yourself to your leaders to your youth pastors um, ask them what you can do how you can grow tell them that you feel called to ministry and that you want them to mentor you and help you grow and then they'll totally. you know, be aware of that I, I just served in any area I possibly could in our kids ministry um, I remember I was on all of our welcome teams awesome. we had three doors at my church and we had an 8.30 service a 10.30 service or 10 o'clock and a 6 p.m. service and so I was like 12 years old I'd do one door in the first service I'd do another Amazing. door in the next service I'd do another door and just greet the people yeah, in the church so good. and so good. I just learned so much as a young person that I use in ministry even today because I've been doing it since I was like 12 years old or totally. even younger like eight years old so yeah so yeah that's awesome all those things <laughs> Yeah, yeah, do, do, do those things. <laughs> yeah, yeah all of them, those yeah. 7,000 things that I just mentioned. <laughs> no, but it's so true. Like there is like that that time of preparing yeah. um, is full of, um, you know, those moments where nobody will see what you Yeah, what totally, you the do, hidden you know, places. Right, the, yep. the hidden places in the moment yep. of integrity or, yeah, or the, um, you know, the service. Like one thing that yeah. was made a big deal kind of when I was growing yeah. up was the that you serve even when no one's looking kind yeah. of thing. So like, yep. you know, Absolutely. hours in this church that I'd be doing yeah. this or that. I'm not going to say it because I still want it to be hidden so I can get yeah, the blessing. Yeah. <laughs> so you get your <laughs> heavenly reward. That's how it yeah. works, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's like a checklist. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But I think that, um, I think people rush to the stage. Yes. I think people 100%. rush to the, um, yeah. the, the big moments of their kind of yeah. calling and they, they yeah. want to be, um, seen. they want to be seen yeah. or they want to be um, kind of in in the heat of that career or whatever it yeah. is you know if they're an astronaut they want to be mm. in the space shuttle already like yeah. they want to go yep. but um, you know I feel like it's such an encouragement to me to say like don't don't waste or don't wish away mm. the the preparation absolutely because it'll crush you the i think i can't remember the exact quote but something that christine kane said about this preparation process something like if the light that is in you is not stronger than the lights that are upon you the lights that are upon you are going to crush you or wreck you or something like that um and it's so true like if you are not ready for that 
um, ministry, whatever that looks like, the stage, the platform, and you haven't been prepared, then it's actually going to do damage rather than, you know, you help you fulfil your calling and stuff like that. So you always want to be submitting to the process, the right time, the right place, yeah. being honouring of God, not trying to push your way forward into things that you're not ready for um, because it's actually going to hurt you if you're not ready for to carry that kind of weight totally. and that kind of influence and um, position. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think there's such a simplicity which we talked about mm-hmm. earlier in the, um, I think in the spiritual gifts is that you can just act. Like yeah. you can just, you don't need a platform, yeah. you don't yeah, need um, the lights or, or whatever to to mm-hmm. move in the spirit or to kind of preach the gospel or whatever. I know um, mm-hmm. there's a popular psychologist that he was in an interview and someone asked like, why are you doing what you're doing? Yeah. And he said, to see what happens. Wow. He said so simply. And I yeah. think it's the most beautiful thing. Me and my brother were freaking out about it. Like it's so beautifully simple mm. just to see what happens. Like can mm. truth, beauty and goodness change the world? Mm. You can find out. Yeah. We can, can yeah. like can Jesus save my school? You Let's can find out. Yeah. You can Come find on. out. Yeah. yeah. It's simply that mm. simple invitation by preaching the gospel Maybe mm. you don't need to stand on a lunch table, but you yeah. can have conversations. Definitely. And I think it's something that you're talking about before. Mm. You don't need um, you don't need a stage to preach the gospel. Yes. I yeah. would argue, in today's day with the generation that yeah. we're speaking to, it's more effective yeah. to be in conversation totally. than from a stage. Totally. Um, it's more effective to be journeying. Maybe that's always been the case, but I'm mm. I'm kind of just becoming aware of the fact mm. that people want relationship. And yeah. if they need a relationship with a believer before they can have it with Jesus, mm. then that's totally. our role. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I think that's um, that's what gets me really excited Come for on. sure. Yeah. yeah. It's that um, that simplicity of let's find out. Like let's yeah. let's let's go about Come doing on. the work of the ministry in our lives, um, and, and and see. And then that will translate to the stage anyway. It's like it's not like we totally. get up on st- stage and all of a sudden we're different people. It's like who we are off stage is the same person you are on stage. No, so exactly. if you're preaching the gospel to people off stage and like I share the gospel with my dentist, he ended up coming to church with me. God's changing his life. And, um, but it's the same on stage. You can't be one person on stage and preach the gospel so and true. then doing a different thing in your daily life. So I think whatever you do in your daily life will become the overflow of, you know, totally. what you do on platforms and different things yeah. like that. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that's, um, yeah, it's so exciting to think what God would be doing yeah. in people and then when they are empowered by the Spirit, go out and do fantastic yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be really good. I'm excited. You know, I, I heard an interview with um, Jensen Franklin where he was talking about this yeah. generation and he's yeah. saying like, you know, you know, we, we quote out of Esther that we're called for such a time as this. Mm. You know, he, he was talking about how he loves this generation. He loves this yeah. kind of Gen Z coming up. There's a lot of things to be said about a lot of people saying a lot yeah. of things about them or whatever, dismissive things, mm. kind of negative things or whatever. But mm. um, he's like, there's never been a more, um, a greater urgency for the gospel to be totally. preached to the world. Totally. And this is the generation that God has put in Come this on. moment. Like each yeah. individual has been born yeah. into this moment mm. um, and will be empowered to do Amen. and to change Amen. Uh, and to kind of affect change and to lead people to the... The knowledge um, of the truth. We have so many mediums that we can use today, like you know, so like good. YouTube and Instagram and TikTok. And you know, I have friends who have like millions of followers on TikTok and stuff, and they're sharing the gospel, seeing people get saved through TikTok. And where was TikTok like ten years ago? We it didn't even Nothing. exist. It was Vine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Vine. It's true. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. true. Um, Nobody got yeah. saved on Vine. No, no. exactly, <laughs> exactly. My generation dropped the ball majorly. <laughs> we didn't even care about preaching the gospel. Um, but yeah, there's all of these platforms and all of these opportunities that are just right there, ready to, you know, Absolutely. see people saved and do yeah. great things for the kingdom. Thanks so much for watching. That is just one of the great conversations I got to have with Pastor Layla. Check right here for the ones you might have missed. If you want to see more of Pastor Layla's videos, she is on YouTube at Layla Nahavandi. Also, her Instagram is at Layla.Nahavandi. She's also got a great podcast called The Eagle and Child, where she talks about great historical figures of faith, theologians, revivalists, all of these great people throughout our history. So make sure you head over to her Instagram, to her YouTube, give her a like, a comment, and give her a big thank you from all of us here at the Embassy.